Thank you so much. Okay. So is it okay we talk in Hindi also a little bit? Because yeah, it's okay. No? I can understand English very well. <laughs> just, just because... Um, क्या होता है ना हिंदी बिकॉज आई ऑल्सो हैव सम टीचर्स इन माई स्कूल हुआ ऑल्सो स्ट्रगलिंग विद द सेम थिंग फर्स्ट थिंग इज दैट लैंग्वेज टीचर्स यूजली लुक आउट फॉर टी डी कनेक्शन दैट इज वेयर द बिगेस्ट कंसर्न लाइक इज इट ऑथेंटिक टी डी कनेक्शन और नॉट दैट इज वन क्वेश्चन इन योर माइंड एंड आई टेल यू वन थिंग आई हैव वर्क इन मल्टीपल स्कूल एवरी स्कूल हैज योर ओन फिलोसफी अबाउट आई पी लेट मी टेल यू दिस एवरीबडी like you know each school because each leader has their own way of looking at things and the way ib framework is it is so vast that everything and anything can fit in so we do not know what is wrong what is right okay right? okay so um today we are looking at authentic assessments and i will talk to you specifically about td connections as well because that is i really love a lot td connections okay so we have seen in the morning assessments and then when i say authentic assessments it's a next step away ahead okay mm -hmm. so i am going to show you something and then you tell me what do you think about it what do you think you can see my screen right yeah okay what do you think it's a, it's an assessment and we all have gone through these assessments no what does it make you wonder or think is there anything wrong in the task yeah very vocabulary is missing vocabulary is missing in what in the task in the answer or what i'm uh, sorry uh, brainstorm verbs what do you What do you like to do with your friends and family? Complete the sentences below with action verbs like jump, dive, float, or build. So the child has used the word move. I See, like to instructions move. are very clear. And I think the instructions is clear. Uh, I I don't agree that the instructions are clear because you just said that you use action verbs, so you need hmm. to tell actually you need to use different action verbs for each of the sentences, something like that. Maybe ah. the students are little; they don't understand it. Agreed, agreed, agreed. Hai, Incomplete instruction. Yeah, Incomplete. clarity is missing. Clarity is missing. Exactly, that clarity is missing. So child has understood. I like to move it, move it, move it, move it. Ah, अच्छा कौन movie टी लिखा है? वही 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 मैंने. So I think it it goes really well with your subject also. You know, when you are giving the instructions, as a teacher, we know what are we looking for. But does a child know hmm. what are we looking for? Yes. So maybe mm -hmm. the child doesn't know whatever the child understood. I don't mm -hmm. think there is anything wrong in it. Next math question. Yes. You have this expand. Child literally took it expand. Ah, uh, <laughs> you have to. You have to say that use algebraic formula to yeah. expand something like that. Give yes. specific instructions. Yes, mm -hmm. that specificity mm. is one of the very very important part of an assessment. Because I see whatever the child has written, what he understood, उसके हिसाब से सही है. राइट <laughs> great 5 great league and i'm also a pyp teacher there uh, grade 5 and um, at shivendi international school i have worked as a pyp associate pyp i have i'm a workshop leader in different platforms this is another platform thank you so much for this opportunity uh, if you want to connect with me um, you can just search on linkedin tina murthy or on facebook chandresh tina murthy there i'm with my husband you can see my handsome husband there and i have a <laughs> on family a son who looks like my husband and my daughter <laughs> so this is my small family and i'm trying to i'm on a mission i'm from a math background and i'm trying to eradicate math fear from the heart and the minds of teachers first and then students nah. so 
I try to do a lot of things. Um, I post a lot of things around math because there's a lot of misconceptions about math. And then we have one saying that, you know, I'm a math person. I'm not a math person. So it's basically that is what is my mission. Okay. So let's see. Uh, we are going to assess, understand what are authentic assessments, first of all, as our special case. What are the examples? Like when we are framing an assessment, what should we consider when we are framing an authentic assessment? And four dimensions of assessment as in uh, enhanced PYP and what is an authenticity meter? If you might have seen my video, I have spoken about authenticity meter in there that how do we measure if an assessment is authentic or not? So that is what we are going to look at. Let's see. Okay. Okay, so um, if I can request, say somebody else joined us just now. Okay, maybe in the main session. Okay. So by looking at these metaphors, again, it's a language. I don't teach Hindi, but I know Hindi very well. So quite uh, like, you know, if you can connect your understanding that what is an assessment, first of all, with any one of the metaphor, what do you think? What is a metaphor? Yeah. One, two, or all of it. What do you think? Should it be like a compass? It should like be a roadmap or a reflection or like a mirror or it's we are the sculptors. What or assessment is a sculpture? It could, could be any any of it. I think so. It depends upon the perspective because when you're talking about assessment as mirror, I think of yeah. self assessment, like as a teacher also. No, it's when I look at the mirror, means uh, how good I am uh, making the student understand of the concept which I am teaching, whether I am sticking to the timeline of the unit. No. And I'm able to complete whatever I have already planned. So maybe I'm assessing and how relevant is my uh, task regarding whatever mm -hmm. is the intention, whether all my kids are getting it or there is some I'm missing out on some of the kids they are not able to do because maybe I have not explained properly like that. If I think of the mirror and the compass is can be for the for me also and for my students also to mm -hmm. understand where they are, in which direction mm -hmm. they are headed, whether they are lost or something like that. The roadmap also same because the roadmap is just like a compass because but compass can be anywhere random. The roadmap will actually show you where you are because this is the path we need to follow and where all of us are, no? mm -hmm. like that. And the sculpture also means I, if I am doing a teacher agency type of thing, means I am going to do some structured thing. So I am the sculptor. So because basically I am going to design the summative assessment task and then I am the sculptor, right? Because I am going to mold the students and all that. So maybe I see a, a little yes. of, of this. Absolutely, all, absolutely. Most all, everything. Yes. Mom, reflections is also there. Yes, right. yes, for right. the mirror. Yes. So it depends <laughs> Agree. at what stage we are taking the assessment. Yeah. What is our intention? The uh, I remember from mm. Ms. Ashikas that what is our learning intention and what are we uh, trying to achieve from our assessment? Mm. That depends that what is an assessment to me. So we have heard about these. Um, so, okay, I'll come to that. So why do we assess? We assess to improve yeah. our students' performance. Yes. It's not mm -hmm. to audit. Like, you know, it used to happen. Um, it still happens and it is also required that um, we need to know where we are. And for that, when we go to MYP, I think the grading will start mm -hmm. uh, till PYP. We do not have the grading, but we still have those, um, uh, the the indicators mm -hmm. which we use to identify where our students are, but it's not only it, mm -hmm. right? It is to to take that data and to make those changes to our instructions. What Ms. Ashika has also mentioned. So we mm -hmm. have these. Um, so what do you think when it says authentic assessment? Where are you in this? Because it will help me to take my session quick, slow, or like on what pace. What do you it think? Can be in a various form. <laughs> no, what do you think you are when you think of authentic assessment in your mind? When you are planning for an assessment, authentic assessment, what do you think? What is your emotion in there? Where? Which stage? I think I'm seven. Okay. Quite me good too. then. Calm, seven, oh. relaxed. You don't need me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> so see, it's 
if you say seven, that means somewhere you are there. It's just that one more push and then maybe we all together can go to that nine. Good mm -hmm. one. Okay, so authentic assessment. When I'm Okay, so when you are saying that you are at seven, what are the, those two thoughts come to your mind when we say authentic assessment? What is it? Means I think that the the student should be able uh, to be uh, to relate to it and relate. Like, um, yeah, you talk about the real world scenarios. Real like, world scenarios. Okay. SDG. So two words from you. Two words, Simi. One is the real world scenario, mm -hmm. and the other one is his own learning with the to see his own progression. Okay. So he should be able to check. real world connections, authentic means that word itself gives it out that you know it has some meaning. Where not in our dreams, right? It has to have a meaning in the real world. Why are we all learning? To be able to transfer this knowledge or these skills to the real world. Yeah. So, uh, Don Miller, form assessment where students are asked to perform real world tasks. That's what you guys have mentioned. That demonstrate meaningful application. Like, you know, uh, it has to be where they should be able to transfer that knowledge. They should be engaging or like, you know, some meaningful conversations some meaningful tasks or worthy problems. So important that um, what are we learning? Is it worth it? If a child should can answer that or if a teacher can answer, is it really worth it? Or we're just doing it for the sake of doing. That moment is a moment of realization when you can say, oh, what I'm doing is authentic. And that's what is IB all about when it says that what you are doing is Worth it or authentic. Okay, so an authentic assessment, if we have to define it, it is an assessment which evaluates if the student can successfully transfer the knowledge and skills gained in the classroom to various contexts, scenarios and situations beyond the classroom, like outside the classroom. You have, as a teacher, we create opportunities or classroom environment which is in there. But if they can take that knowledge or skills and apply it outside, can transfer this outside, that is when we achieve our um, goal that, okay, our children are learning. Yeah. Okay, so I think I don't have to go into this because we are we know that the traditional assessments we have been facing in our childhood and now how things have changed. Yeah. Okay, this is something very, very powerful. Hmm. Should we put what should we put down what we think is right or what we think you think is right? Hmm. Does it make you hmm? <laughs> point yes. of view. Yes. So the child point is asking view. whether you want from our point of view or your point of view. Uh -huh. you what is right is wrong. In our classroom, hmm. we we give them, we have already decided everything. Hmm. Hmm. Our whole POI is set before they come. Yeah. Right? I have yeah. been reading uh, Trevor McKenzie, this uh, question routines, and he says such a beautiful thing that, you know, co-constructing everything. We have been hearing it from, like, you know, from years and from many, many scholars and educators that co-constructing, co-constructing. But this is one book which I have uh, felt that it is helping me to co-construct. Even, uh, I remember Ms. Ashika has mentioned that, you know, learning intentions we could set. But success mm -hmm. criteria, we could co-construct. But I think a little differently. But with our PYP educators, I think we can co-construct our learning intentions as well. Because the moment we give them that, we give them or we drive the central idea from them, at least after that, we have given them a push or the starting point. After that, they can identify what they want to do in it. So maybe the, the lines of inquiry can be co-constructed with them, which will be our learning intention. And based on that, we can co-construct our success criteria as well. This is what I feel. But it depends on school to school and uh, facilitators and educators. Okay, so the type, uh, remember the metaphor we had? So as a compass, it's a diagnostic assessment which will help us to identify our direction to start with, that okay, where to go. Then um, assessment for learning, uh, 
beautifully explained and you know uh, facilitated by Ms. Ashika, where she spoke about that how can it set up our journey ahead. So maybe um, the uh, the the roadmap because it gives us a direction and sets us to go ahead, right? And then assessment of learning, which is the reflection which we do at the end of our learning as like summative assessment, which is not there anymore in our uh, PYP and enhanced PYP. Summative assessment is gone, but still it depends on school that if we are doing it. So that again, I feel that, you know, that also gives us a checkpoint for teachers that, okay, this is what my children have done by that time. Maybe one lesson or two lesson to go back, there's nothing wrong in it. So assessment of learning at times is very important. And the final one, the sculptor one, assessment as learning, because not only uh, teachers, it's students also who are sculpting their uh, learning journey. Because in, I'm in PYP 5, by that time, students are capable enough to sculpt or to, you know, uh, mold. But obviously, teachers are always required at every stage. So these are the types of assessment. Um, Ms. Simi, do you need any um, uh, description on any one of it? Any explanation or? No, 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 ma'am. No, ma okay, fine. Because you have 13 years of IB experience, I'm sure. Okay, so here comes authentic assessment. So when See, I say authentic, ma'am, yeah. I have thirteen year experience, but in Hindi language, na there are so many things. Sometimes it goes thematic. Sometimes, mm -hmm. sometimes it goes authentic. Uh, so we are just going, going, going as per the children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Vocabulary is very difficult. Resources are very limited. So we created all the things on our own sometimes so <laughs> i i completely feel you what you are saying as a teachers ke liye bahut mushkil hota hai bahut baar bahut sunti hu maine jitne bhi hindi ke liye bahut difficult ho jata hai but i'm really wondering you are in north where the home language is hindi even then you guys struggle yeah Nowadays, students are not thinking in Hindi. Not they thinking in Hindi? Think. Yeah. <laughs> so they can't okay. connect. If we use a proper word, like Paryavaran, mm -hmm. I mean, it's very difficult for them. Grade 1 or 2 ka bacha can't write this word. You ask me, mm -hmm. I cannot write this word. <laughs> Because for small children, the vocabulary is very difficult for small children. So they have to write it. उनके उनके हिसाब से फिर प्लान करना पड़ता है उसको फिर कभी-कभी बायलिंगुअल करना होता है ऑब्वियसली दैट इज डिफरेंशिएशन व्हिच एंड इन आवर स्कूल हमें अलाउड नहीं था राइटिंग में बायलिंगुअल करना पर हमें क्लास में बोलना होता था क्यों राइटिंग में हम नहीं देते थे बायलिंगुअल पेरेंट्स कई बार नॉर्थ के पेरेंट्स बहुत ऑब्जेक्ट करते हैं इस बात के लिए बट आईबी फिलॉसफी से दैट इज वन ऑफ द पॉइंट इन द लैंग्वेज पॉलिसी मतलब सी डिपेंड्स ऑन दे आर सेइंग इफ यू आर टीचिंग देम अगर आप उनके सामने बार बार पर्यावरण बोलोगे तो वो अपने आप समझ जाएंगे लेकिन अगर आप उनको रेडी टू इट दे दोगे तो वो हिंदी पढ़ेंगे नहीं फिर वो इंग्लिश ही पढ़ेंगे ये भी एक बात है नहीं बट सी इनिशियली टू मेक दोस कनेक्शंस मे बी लाइक यू नो पर्यावरण है क्या अगर हम बच्चों को बताएंगे ही नहीं कि वो है क्या या हम किस चीज किस वर्ड से कनेक्ट कर रहे हैं सो वी विल एक्सप्लेन ड्यूरिंग द क्लास हम बताएंगे उनको ये शब्द बार बार सुनाएंगे ताकि वो यूज्ड टू हो जाएं क्लास में एनवायरनमेंट क्रिएट करेंगे बाहर गार्डन में ले जाएंगे वीडियोस दिखाएंगे तो सुन लेंगे समझ लेंगे लेकिन जब लिखने की बात आएगी तो उनको जब तक रेफ नहीं सिखा देंगे हिंदी में देर इज अ रेफ मात्रा होती है वो तब तक हम उनको राइटिंग में वो वर्ड नहीं कराएंगे पर हम उनको बायलिंगुअल रिटर्न में नहीं दे सकते वरना वो कोशिश ऐसा कहते हैं कि वो कोशिश नहीं करेंगे इफ यू गिव देम इंग्लिश वर्ड देन दे विल ऑलवेज रीड दो वो हिंदी कोशिश ही नहीं करेंगे आई थिंक इट डिपेंड्स ऑन द लैंग्वेज पॉलिसी डेवलप्ड बाय स्कूल एंड व्हाट आई नो एज द IB it never asks you to put down your mother language. It it in fact says that you know you uplift your mother language. If a child needs their conversation or their reflections have to be written in uh, mother language, that should also not be a problem. Only only for the abnicio students. Those are uh, not from India or those are uh -huh. not 
फॉर हिंदी बैकग्राउंड तो उनके लिए हम बायोलिंगल राइटिंग में देते थे अदरवाइज नॉर्मल स्टूडेंट्स को वी डोंट उटिसिटीड The physical context that how does it um, resemble a world, real world scenario, and what resources are available? Like you know, you need to keep these pointers in mind when you are framing an uh, authentic assessment. How much time do students have to complete the task? With whom do they have to do the task? What must come out come from it? This is one of the big thing I have faced and I have seen with many of the teachers, even when I was a coordinator, that. teachers do not know that they are assuming something will come children will do it ma'am what exactly are we looking for at least some kind of uh, options do we need to have in mind that what must come from it at least i am looking for a, if there is a presentation what am i looking in the presentation right so what is the result of their efforts and how uh, <clears throat> they have to be like how on what basis they will be evaluated or judged judged is a again a word but what on what basis are we going to evaluate them it is like any other assessment we, i'm sure whenever whenever we are framing an assessment we are keeping these things in mind but it's just to reinforcing that an assessment becomes more authentic when we have these pointers in mind okay so next is these some i am showing you some assessments and if you can read and let me know whether they are authentic or not what do you think why they are authentic or not so the first one let's do it together not a big deal let's do it together so the first one says asking students to measure and record the lengths of different objects in their classroom using a ruler what do you think yes. is it an authentic yes or no just think about it take a moment हो सकता है मे भी हो सकता है क्योंकि एविडेंस है हमारे पास नंबर है हमारे पास इसके साथ में हम लोग और कुछ उसको ऐड कर सकते हैं बोल के कि वी कैन से दैट विच इज द लॉन्गेस्ट विच इज द शॉर्टेस्ट लाइक दैट सो दैट टू मेक इट मोर रिलेटेबल क्योंकि क्योंकि सिर्फ वैसा मेशर करके हम क्या करेंगे ना Yeah, they we only know that they know how to use a ruler. But after they know how to use a ruler, can they tell which is longer, which is shorter? So you come with the math thing, no? Greater than, less than, equal to. At different levels, depends on which class we are doing it. There yeah. can be a real time context which can be added to it. Yes. Right. So that mm -hmm. they can transfer their understanding of identifying a tool. Yes. Using it. in a real life context yes so if a student so we are trying to assess that whether the child has understood which tool to use right mm -hmm. then what how are they measuring how are they using that particular tool and what are they going to do with that knowledge mm -hmm. so exactly so that is somewhere like this is a one very basic thing and then maybe it can be taken to the next level by relating it to the real life context yes the second one says that having students work in groups to design and construct a bridge using given materials to test its strength and load bearing capacity again you can give them a context mm -hmm. so i can tell them you have built a bridge so suppose i have a truck load of uh, this many um, uh, cement blocks so will the bridge collapse what do you think or will it not collapse so maybe after they construct this i give them an activity they will use lego bricks and then they will try to use a vehicle everyone will use the same vehicle and they will see how many number of lego bricks uh, their bridge is able to withstand and then they will come to a conclusion whose bridge uh, is more strong something like that that is there 
in fact, if you look at this task, it is saying somewhere that using given to test its strength, strength yeah. and yeah. load bearing capacity. Yes, so, yes. mention so it, it is given there. Hmm. Yes. So now, when they are looking at this task, they will come up with these scenarios what you just yes. have mentioned. Hmm. So the children are thinking that what kind of uh, evidences we should create to make our teacher understand our understanding of its strength and load bearing capacity. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Asking students to write a summary of news article they read. Word limit and uh, not given. At, uh, how much grammar should be covered is not mentioned here. If if I'm asking you, if I'm asking a child to write a summary of news article, mm -hmm. that's that's it, the task. So what yeah. do you think? What are what is he going? So I am trying to assess whether the child could write a summary of an article. Okay, of so an article. I, yeah, so maybe I have given them uh, that uh, at least middle and end mm -hmm. how to write paragraph. Mm -hmm. So maybe I will tell them uh, means I will have to assess them accordingly whether they have used that whether whatever vocabulary has been mm -hmm. taught during that particular unit or during whatever I have taught whether they are using it. Suppose I have taught them about verbs, verbs and adjectives. So I have to see that they have used those. In yeah, the so article. maybe a checklist. Checklist, checklist yeah. must be with this. Right, right. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So shall I go forward? It's okay. Is it yes. okay? Because... We have understood like, you know, in a task, yeah. when we are creating a task, what all should we include to make mm -hmm. it complete, to make it sound complete and yeah. to connect it to the, again, real life connection. That is the most important part when we talk about authentic assessments. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, there is a Padlet link. I'm putting it in the chat. And there are a few assessments. Um, okay. Let me, I can put it here itself. No, we are only three. Yeah, you can put it in Zoom chat also. Yeah. Oh, we can. I can just show you here itself. No? Okay. Ha. Huh, yeah. Right. So there are. Th I thought of grade like grade one to grade five. Okay. So we have got like first of all authentic assessment. Just to again um, recall, they are real world task. They always look in for specific skill or some competencies, some skills. Mm -hmm. Yes. And those skills should be applied. Knowledge and skills should be applied in that. It should be engaging and worthy. This worthy, it's really stuck to me. There has to be multiple perspectives as well. They, it might be possible or might not be because it depends on the task. Mm -hmm. um, assessment of process and product, like processes always should be kept forward uh, after the product. And it has to be a feedback rich, like, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I think in the morning also we have spoken about it. So this is that framework. There are these tasks. This is for grade one and two. Um, so the task is my favorite season drawing. So mm -hmm. students will create a drawing depicting their favorite season. They will use crayons, markers, or colored pencils to illustrate elements such as weather, activities, and nature associated with this, with that season. So there are two tasks. I would like to know what do you think, which one is authentic or not? Okay. So this one is on language. Students will complete a word search puzzle containing vocabulary words related to animals, they will find and circle the words within a grid of letters. You know, we generally have that word search well, uh, grid. Yeah. So in there, they are finding out the words which are related to animals. Hmm. And another one, the first one is where they are creating a picture of their favorite season. So what do you think? Which one? Uh, no, none like of in them. Language. Why? Because... Uh... Everything is mentioned clearly that vocabulary mm -hmm. chahiye, or animal related hona chahiye. picture mein wo kuch bhi create kar denge. Dekho, kya likha hai? Student will create it. Depicting their favorite Chai. season. Haan. Ab isme what all can they use? It is given there. Yeah. The nature associated with that season. Haan. So what do you first think? One, uh, first, I think of first one because they are relating, they are thinking back because they are thinking back to what all seasons are there in my particular country, which season I like. So naturally they will, uh, they will select which, whichever is their favorite season and maybe uh, they will try to relate, uh, think about uh, their memories related to that particular season. Suppose exactly. when they're talking about summer season, maybe they like eating ice cream, going to the beach, swimming. So I think uh, one, because in second one, what is happening is that you, it is just a, a closed thing. It is not open, open-ended because you have exactly. given them 
सर्टेन क्यूब्स और तुमको उसी में ही तुमको करना है कैन यू रिपीट योर क्वेश्चन वंस अच्छा तो क्वेश्चन ये था कि देर आर द टू सिनेरियोस गिवन देयर देयर आर टू असेसमेंट्स ठीक है वन इज ऑन एक पिक्चर क्रिएट करना है सेकंड वन इज ऑन एक ग्रिड दे दिया जिसके अंदर हमें एनिमल्स के नाम आइडेंटिफाई करने हैं ठीक है सो देयर आर टू थिंग्स व्हिच यू हैव मेन हाउ डू यू हाउ डू आई से योर नेम आई एम सो सॉरी सतन सतन फ्रेमिंग are we pushing their thinking towards uh, to make it open or not that is mm-hmm. one thing now in the first scenario their critical thinking is happening they are recalling they are yeah. recalling what they like but they are comparing they are analyzing mm-hmm. that means that they are identifying there are so mm-hmm. many if you know bloom's taxonomy there are so many things which are happening at the end so the uh, recalling understanding and analyzing evaluating all mm. of them are happening now grade one child we ask them to draw up and draw they just draw is it mm. they just don't draw there's so much of thinking which goes on mm. which as an adult which we might think ah, okay draw it to karna mm. but understand at their level mm. so much goes on mm. right okay now grade 3 and 4 mathematics okay mathematics uh, multiplication worksheet fine is it wrong to give worksheet Great. no it's not wrong because we need them to practice practice makes perfect exactly uh-huh. multiplication uh-huh. tables to learn karna hi hai na yes Kuchin yes to learn karna hi uh-huh. yes See, we teach them the concept hmm. we teach them the concept that repeated addition is multiplication repeated hmm. subtraction is division so hmm. they understand the concept but at hmm. every point of time they cannot go on to do that repeated addition to find out the answer na hmm. so it is important to do these multiplication now yes, yes. scenario is they will complete a series of multiplication problems on a worksheet within a set time limit hmm they will solve as many problems as possible aiming for accuracy and speed hmm another one is on fitness hmm they will participate in a fitness challenge consisting of various exercises such as jumping jacks push ups sit ups they will record the number of repetitions completed for each exercise and track their progress over several weeks what do you think hmm. authentic or not somewhere lagging no absolutely second not. second one no the hmm. physical i so that is more authentic because hmm. you are giving them over a period of time and you are telling them uh, to how many times jumping jacks suppose they are doing jumping jacks so how many times they are doing in a day multiply by how many days they are doing it right okay so, so giving them a context yeah hmm. right so we have our uh, framework now let's assess it on that so we, what the students have to do is it clear to the students that, that what do they need to do yeah. right yes it, is it resembling a real world con- scenario yes some right yeah but in what about in drill this multiplication drill this is practice this is just a practice right this is just yeah. a practice assess- can be considered as assessment yeah it is an assessment because you mm-hmm. come to know whether they have understood uh, the method to multiply using the multiplication table ha huh. okay matlab ha huh. it is it is important it is yeah. to be done but yeah. we can always take it to the next step to make it more authentic that's the whole scene right yes yes okay acha ye wala dekhte hain very interesting fill in the blanks worksheet on state capitals okay worksheet hai again fill in the blanks hai mm-hmm. uh, state hai capital likhna hai ha huh. and word bank bhi diya hai acha word bank bhi diya hai mm. do we still do these kind of things student complete the Yes, we do that because they should know that. हम भी करते हैं क्योंकि हमारे पास knowledge acquisition questions is still important, yeah. important na. Because we start with factual questions, so these are factual questions. Right. So yeah. Hmm. Because I have seen people who are like you know arguing on this part that why do we still need to do these things? Google करो answer मिल जाएगा ना. But but don't you think that these knowledge acquisition is equally important? So how yes, long we have the session? 
some uh, student to blank words helping words ha huh. word bank upar de diya thoda ha aur kisi kisi mein hum word bank nahi dete the differentiated sheets ho jate the ha ha theek hai hmm sahi hai ha theek hai to question hai kuch isme se nahi acha after sharing ha ha that is absolutely fine that acha now next scenario is they are planning a pizza party for their class where uh, they are selecting toppings estimating number of pizzas needed total cost creating invitation so i'm sure you must have got it like you know this is completely yeah. a complete party planning is happening yeah. where yeah. They, uh, all the uh, steps have been given that what yes. wants to be done and also the final outcome is also very much evident in there for the teacher mm -hmm. that what is she assessing in fact children at every stage of time they know what are they doing and mm -hmm. that road map is there for them so it is mm -hmm. a very good example of student uh, assessment as learning mm -hmm. right um, practical because, learning but, mm -hmm. yeah problem based learning project based learning mm -hmm. a lot of things so it is an uh, authentic assessment right yeah. yes okay okay we'll go back to this okay so when we are reflecting on our assessments so that is how when we are uh, the framework which i have shown you it is when you are starting to frame your assessments or maybe when you are co you, you can also co construct it with your children based on that framework because i am a very like i'm a advocate right now where i want to co construct everything with them maybe next year our poi because for inquiry like this uh, exhibition also we have done it along with our children which who were in grade five, uh, four before so with them we have co constructed that what inquiry they would like to take in for their exhibition also so i am advocating that so now once that is done when we have framed our assessment so because they know what are they been assessed on now reflecting back on it so these questions can help us to reflect back for us and for students if you want to take a screenshot please feel free to do that okay um did the task do what it was assigned uh, designed to do did the task require to students to transfer their knowledge the content knowledge and conceptual understanding as well which will come in obviously if it is an authentic assessment conceptual understanding will be assessed by default so that scoring criteria which it provide um, enough understanding for us for children and for teachers did it go on multiple layers of evidence um uh, the pizza party one it will have checkpoints because when they are selecting their total budget is being given when they are selecting that they will be checking and reflecting back whether they are uh, selecting the right options or not so it is multiple layer um, layers of checking in there then um did students have opportunity throughout the task to check uh, to assess their progress that is what we are talking about in fact the grade one child who is drawing um that picture do you think it will fit in there somewhere the child who has supposed to draw their uh, favorite season hmm do you think this question will go in somewhere where they have got the opportunity throughout the task to assess their progress and make changes to their work yes i think because they can see um for example we might bring in peer assessment at hmm. uh, like you know and uh -huh. then so that is how i remember ms ashika talked about it the hmm. peer assessment yes so it's a very very powerful tool because children at grade one they might don't want to hear that you know from their teacher hmm. oh, it's hmm. not right or something but from their friends it's okay so hmm. when peer assessment happens or peer reflection not if not saying assessment peer yeah. reflection at that point of time they might want to pick out oh do you want to uh, draw some more clouds if it is a rainy mm -hmm. season you want to draw a few more like puddles or something so that's how a feedback would be given and it 
this question because i know this when this question we were doing it in our school there were teachers uh, like grade 1 and grade 2 they said miss tina these questions na they are for always for higher level kids grade 5 mm -hmm. can do it you always talk about grade 5 but no we just have to come down to their level to think mm -hmm. like that okay so authentic assessment a very very important powerful thing is that it always inform the teacher that how this can be uh, what kind of adjustments or changes can be made to that task to be implemented in future because we will be doing similar things or picking up on that pace and doing something which the authentic assessment helps us to identify that okay okay again another one to just laugh out so i taught stripe how to whistle i don't hear him whistling i said i taught <laughs> <laughs> i didn't say he learned it i didn't it. say he learned it <laughs> it happens isn't it yeah it, it happens i remember ms ashika asked that you know um, if you ask a question and then some of them answer and then you go forward it happens no mm. and especially in india we have children like 25 30 children in our class mm. we have so many events to finish and then we want lot of things to happen isn't it ib schools the story of ib schools are same everywhere so it happens so maybe sometimes we have to make sure or take a little more extra efforts to hear out everybody and i think she has given beautiful strategies to do it that mm -hmm. no child is left behind mm -hmm. yes i really love the traffic light one where uh, yeah yeah non verbal vtas are always uh, vtas are always very interesting <laughs> yes. so i really love that one traffic light one because it's non verbal because grade 5 yeah. 25 children speaking at the same time you will go crazy anyways so i really love that one because you will know it you will get it maybe in the next day instruction or teaching practice could be tweet a little bit based on that okay what time is it it is only 1 o'clock okay so we have 15 minutes okay <laughs> पॉपसिकल वाला भी अच्छा था हाँ, वो हम बहुत मतलब हम लोग करते हैं दैट तो मतलब है पार्ट एंड पार्सल हो जाता है क्लासरूम का गुड वन दैट इज आल्सो अ गुड वन वी हैव यूज्ड इट ड्यूरिंग कोविड बिकॉज यू नो नो चिल्ड्रन सो रेस्टलेस एंड एवरीवन दे वांट अ चांस एंड द पेरेंट्स आर सेइंग दैट मेरे बच्चे ने बोला नहीं हमारे गेट सो वी यूज्ड टू यूज दिस पॉपसिकल मेथड ओनली दिस पेड एक आल्सो इज वेरी पावरफुल बिकॉज़ आई हैव यूज्ड इट थ्रू आउट माय कोविड टीचिंग पेड एक Grade five था तो they were able to do it. They were able to write their answers and it was very interactive. So it was not like a monotonous where I am only saying and they are just listening. So mm -hmm. Pedic, I have used it that time. Okay. So Chal so, ma'am, uh, I have a uh, question with you actually. Yeah. Uh, अगर छोटा बच्चा कोई बहुत रिजिड हो जाता है तो आप लोग उसको कैसे फिर एनकरेज करते हो राइटिंग के लिए? अच्छा अगर छोटा बच्चा बहुत रिजिड हो गया मतलब क्या उसको करना? आज नहीं लिखना. Hmm. अच्छा hmm. तो आप क्या करोगे उसके लिए <laughs> उसके लिए क्या करेंगे तो उसको कुछ ऐसा गेम जैसा सोचना पड़ेगा हाँ. जिसमें बच्चा लिखेगा लेकिन उसको नहीं पता चलेगा कि वो लिख रहा है ऐसे भी दो सबसे पहले तो ये पता करना हाँ. सबसे पहले ये पता करना है कि उसके लिए उसको सबसे अच्छा क्या लगता है वो hmm. उसके वो हमारे लिए ब्राइव है ये चाहिए तो बेटा करना तो पड़ेगा है ना सो समाइम्स वी हैव टू बी प्लेइंग विद देम आई डोंट माइंड से But yeah, yeah. children are children. At the end of the day, they might want. They don't want to. And tell me, which child wants to write? Yeah. Today's date, me, so nobody wants. Nobody to write. wants to write. Actually, nobody wants to write. See, okay. So sometimes we have to play up with them. That what do they like most, and mm -hmm. what is their the best stimuli? You know, through that, um, you can motivate them. You can encourage them. Or sometimes, see, you know, okay, son, four places are two. We will write. कल भी करना पड़ता है है ना वो वो तो 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 हिंदी में ऐसे ही करते हैं मैम अनुच्छेद फिर उसको नहीं लिखना होता उसको में लिख दो चलो पांच अभी हमको कोई बोले लिखने के लिए तो मतलब 
<laughs> और यू कैन मेक इट एज एज अ कॉम्पिटिशन सॉर्ट ऑफ थिंग मतलब कॉम्पिटिटिव क्योंकि बच्चे लोग बहुत कॉम्पिटिटिव रहते हैं सपोज इट विल बी लाइक इट विल बी लाइक अ कॉम्पिटिशन कौन कितना अच्छे से लिखता है फिर उनको बच्चे लोग को छोटे बच्चे लोग को तो स्टार्स बहुत अच्छा लगता है mm-hmm. तो जो सबसे अच्छा मिलेगा उसको ये स्टार मिलेगा वो स्टार मिलेगा ऐसा करके हमको उनको रिझाना पड़ेगा अलग अलग तरीके से मे बी तुम उनको फिर ये भी दे दो मैनिपुलेटिव भी दे दो मैनिपुलेटिव लेके उन लोग लिखेंगे जैसे कि मैंने उनको लेगो दिया और मैंने बोला लेगो में से ये अक्षर बनाओ तो मतलब लेगो को ज्वाइन करके वो र बनाएगा ऐसा ऐसा करके फिर देखेगा तो वो बनाने का अभी बहुत बढ़िया तुमने ऐसा किया है अभी तुम उसको बुक में ज्यादा तुम बना के दिखाओ करके ऐसा करके मतलब इन डायरेक्ट वो उनको पता भी नहीं चलेगा कि एक्चुअली वो लोग लिख रहे हैं तो ऐसे भी में हैंडल करना पड़ेगा घुमा फिरा के लेकिन वो करना ही है यू शुड नो की वो बच्चे को क्या अच्छा लगता है तो वो वे में अगर बोलेंगे ना तो फिर उनको अच्छा लगेगा समझो उनको कोई कोई कार्टून अच्छा लगता रहेगा या कोई प्ले अच्छा लगता रहेगा कोई मैनिपुलेटिव से खेलने को अच्छा लगेगा तो मे बी जो उनको पसंद है ना वो यूज करके तुम उनसे काम करवा सकते हो ऐसा तुमको फिर सोचना पड़ेगा कि किसके लिए क्या चलेगा ऐसा करना तो करनी पड़ेगी हाँ के लिए डिफरेंट डिफरेंट स्ट्रेटजीज है हाँ वही क्योंकि कोई कोई बच्चे लोग रहते हैं ना जिसका एक्चुअली ज्यादा ज्यादा आई क्यू हाई रहता है ना उन लोग ज्यादा लेजी रहते हैं मैंने हाँ। ऐसा ऐसा नहीं है कि उनको आता नहीं है ना उनको करना नहीं है क्योंकि उनको मालूम है ये तो कुछ नहीं मैं कर लूंगा करके ना तो उनको फिर कुछ तो चैलेंजिंग देना पड़ेगा वो एक है दैट इज अनादर वन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट इन ऑथेंटिक असेसमेंट एज वेल दैट इज चैलेंजिंग so when we when we say like you know uh, there are we, that assessment um when we plan for assessments and if it is standardized um, uh, that is what here Trevor McKenzie also says mm-hmm. like you know um generally in PYP we do not have those standardized assessments do you have in your schools standardized okay. assessments uh-huh. We yeah. we didn't have we only had the number of assessments that you need to have like okay. uh, being an HRT um for every unit we need to have uh, three for the UI two for the mathematics two for Achha. the languages no so we had those numbers which uh, which we have which which we need to which we need okay. to have no so like you that. have those term term um. exams or term uh, tests so oh, kind no, of we don't no. have we didn't have term exams like thing only for the portfolio uh, portfolio also yeah portfolio nikalne ke ha for for ye student conference mein dikhane ke liye humko portfolio yeah. banana padta hai na mm-hmm. to har ek unit ke liye fir unko select karna padta hai to teacher selected mm-hmm. kitna rahega student mm-hmm. selected kitna rahega for the hrt ke liye unit ui ke liye aur fir mm-hmm. single subject ke liye bhi hota tha matlab single mm-hmm. subject ke liye mostly kya hota tha term 1 ke liye ek aur term टीचिंगली of teaching is equally important now yes. what trevor mckenzie says that 90 10 balance hmm. so 90% if we could have assessment as an assessment for learning okay. we could have the 10 part of it as assessment of learning okay. because it okay. is going to help us we are not going back to that concept and making any changes when we talk about assessment of learning so hmm. that could be for us to inform as an overall picture of my class yeah my students performance that will help me in making my uh, teacher portfolio right mm-hmm. now when it comes to assessment for and as that should hold the most of the uh, importance in our teaching mm-hmm. so that is what talking driver mckenzie i'll just show you a little bit of it it is on standardized tests and this one you'd have to share the sound sorry so i have to share again right yeah or you can just uh, click on share and the 
you you should be able to see there are options over there Okay, I just share again. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you can share again also. Yes. 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 A standardized test or incomes, <laughs> a summative assessment. And it feels like the pressure kind of goes up for those. And that's where all the focus goes for students and for families. So how do you balance having those assessments, but also valuing kind of the entire process? Yeah, well, those assessments, I, I, I don't, I don't undervalue those. I, I don't not do them with my scholars. They're very important. That data is is critical. Um, those data points, you know, any data that we can collect from a large body of students, where we can make some some assumptions, we can analyze them, we can compare them across a large data set. That's important. But the the other set of data holds great importance as well. You know, the color the qualitative, the co conferencing, the evidencing, the feedback. And, and so what we propose in schools that are engaged in inquiry is striking a, a more powerful balance between our summatives and our formatives, between those really, really high stakes standardized tests and our rich formative feedback, coaching and conferencing. Undeniably, we don't wanna get our kids ready for standardized tests by giving them more standardized tests. You know, and, and that's that that can be really hard for some teachers to hear. We want them to engage in more test prep and practice tests to get them ready for the high stakes tests. The opposite is actually true. We want to take them to performances less often and get them into coaching mode more. OK, so that is what I was talking about, that it is more on the whole. You can see my screen now, right? The authentic assessment one. OK, yes, so yes. yeah, so that is what. You know, um, it more happens in uh, MYP and thereafter. But in PYP, I it's still I still know some schools who are doing exams at grade four and grade five level, where that data they take it as in to analyze the whole school community. So I'm just saying that it both are important, but it depends on how do we do it, right? Okay, so I've been saying about process is much more important than product. And so when we start, so we always establish our learning intentions and the success criteria, right? And then we roam around this circle, isn't it? That, you know, we measure uh, uh, the diagnostic assessment or the prior assessment we do to understand where children are, and then we set up individual student goals, though I'm not able to do individual goals, but yes, in groups, because having 25 children and then doing that, it becomes sometimes too much. So what we do, we put them into groups after assessing, we understand that, you know, children generally falls under those three categories. And that's how we set up the goals for them. We monitor and document their learning throughout the unit. And then finally, we report on that learning. So have you heard about, I'm sure you must have the there's four dimensions of assessment as per PYP enhanced PYP. Simi, have you yeah. gone through these things? Have you seen this? Yeah, okay, fine. So I'll just take it very quickly and I will share some strategies which I have been using in my classroom for authentic assessment. I was on mute, yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you so much. So the first one, the most important one is monitoring, right? We know about that, documenting, and we have our portfolios, the learning journals, graphics. All of this, we I'm sure we all know. VTRs. Yes. We use rubrics, checklist, exemplars, so, and reporting is done through PTMs, student led conference, mm -hmm. final reports which we send, comments, mm -hmm. and some. Uh, we do celebration of learning as well, where we do invite our uh, parents to see how children are doing. Another one to just to laugh out, just to keep our mood easy and light. So, what grade did you get? I got an A. Really? Boy, I would hate to be you. I got a C. Why on earth would you rather get a, uh, a C than an A? I find my life is a lot easier the lower I keep my everyone's expectations. <laughs> that is another way to look at it. <laughs> right, again. Okay, so this is a few uh, examples which I'm showing you here. Um, what's for lunch? This is one of the math activity we did after um, doing 
multiple uh, multiple concepts. Number system we did, uh, including fractions, percentages, and decimals, and measurement. And that is when they came up. This was their final task. This was their assessment of learning. But it was done over a period of time where they had the chance to go back to what they are doing. They, it was done in groups. So they were informed of what they were doing. They knew that on what basis they will be evaluated as well. There is another one, which is a very interesting one I'll show you. Uh, this one also I'll show you. This is design thinking. Um, this uh, have, You must have heard about micro-credentials in the IB exchange, have you? No. Under IB exchange, it's a beautiful thing. You, can, you should try this. Under yeah. IB exchange, there is something called micro-credentials. It is a, um, in there, you can choose... There are a lot of um, topics teachers can choose and you submit your evidences to IB. So this is one which I did. So I, you can earn these micro credentials. They are um, like badges as an IB teacher and you can flaunt these and it's, it's free. So you don't have to do much. So whatever the unit you are doing, based on that, you can choose one of the credentials and then you can earn these badges. So I have done this. Um, it was on pedagogy. And we have used design thinking complete process. So that was another example of authentic assessment, what I have done. So they were doing a unit on energy and they identified a problem where segregation, the segregation of waste was happening at home. Mm -hmm. Then what? The municipal corporation, that the truck which comes, they were putting everything together. So one group of children, they identified that there's no point of segregating it because everything was getting mixed up. So they came up with a prototype. So they um, identified the problem. They empathized with those workers as well because they were not trained to do it. So they empathized with them. They empathized with the environment. Then they defined the problem. They ideated. They came up with a lot of different um, solutions. And then they came up on the prototype. If I have. I don't have that picture there. But they came up on that prototype. Then they designed that truck, which we submitted to IB, and we got that credential for this. Um, there is one example from PYP2. I'll show you that. So it was uh, under sharing the planet. So they were going on uh, on holidays. And then they got worried about the plants which they had in their classroom. So how to get do the irrigation. So for that, they came up with a plan to do that uh, drop irrigation. You know, this one. So the uh, teacher is teaching them how to do it. And then they came up with this so that their plants can survive during the holidays as well. Mm -hmm. the, drip or, the, the drip irrigation. Mm -hmm. The authentic assessment, what they have done. Um, okay. Another one is, it's also a very interesting one, some math. It is a mystery. I I love giving my children a lot of uh, mysteries to solve whenever they are doing any uh, concept. So it is finding mystery now. So the clues were given. So when they will solve, I'll show you. You can see this, right? So this was the key. This was the key to solve. And these are the questions. So this is the whole scenario which was given to them. It can be, it can come down to any level. So they have to solve this and then the letters will come. They will decode the mystery and they will find out where is Mistina. Like this. So a lot of concepts were covered in this also. Another one is, okay. One, just a teaching strategy I'm sharing here. It's called mistake wall because I told you that I want to eradicate that fear of math. So mistake wall is, um, it's just a big heading in my classroom, mistake wall, and there's a blank chart. So whenever there is a child who makes mistake in every any subject, we write it down there. We celebrate that mistake in a way that, you know, um, okay. And then we go through that mistake we talk about it in the classroom. The child identifies that where the child has gone wrong and it corrects a lot of other children who are making the same mistake. Now, they're not coming out with that uh, or telling 
that, okay, we have done it. But once we talked about it, then they say, okay, ma'am, Miss Tina, we have also made the mistake. So they're not um, scared of making mistakes. They know that it is it is absolutely okay to make mistakes in this classroom. So this is one thing which goes really, really well. And in my all my workshops, I always speak about it. So you can always have that in your classroom. It's It looks beautiful. It's a nice idea. Yes, it is. So in fact, the children who are not writing that uh, word also, maybe you can motivate them through this. That, okay, even if you write it wrong, there's nothing wrong in it. It goes to our mistake wall. It gets a credibility there. So that could be a motivation for them. Another uh, thing is graphs. I'm sure you might be, must be knowing about it. Grade four and five, I think, works quite well with this. Um, but it can go to any level. Grasp is uh, another uh, technique which can be used for authentic assessments because it tells you what is your goal, whom it is for, your audience, um, the, the situation, what is your product going to be, and then you self-assess it. Okay. These are few scenarios again uh, from these three subjects I just picked up. If we can assess them, how much time do we have? We don't have time. Yeah, we have run. Oh. <laughs> it's yeah. lunch break now. Okay, so the first, I'll just take one. Yeah. So the first one was uh, students are choosing a global issue. It could be climate uh, change, poverty or anything. And creating an action plan. Hmm. Which outline steps that they can take within their community to address it. It has a real world connection because it's connecting with uh, SDGs as well. Uh, it, it will bring in some NGOs or community leaders to address this challenge which they are facing. So we evaluated students' research, their critical thinking and ability to connect their inquiry to global issues. So it has gone from local to global, the real world context. But do you think it is lagging somewhere? As per the framework of our um, authentic assessment? Yes. Where? Yes, real life connection is there. Yeah. It is there. So where yeah. is it lagging? Lagging. One minute. Outline steps. They can Student global issue. Poverty. Create action plan. Outline steps. Everything is. Everything is. Everything is. Everything is. Everything In reporting. Oh. Mm -hmm. I didn't take you guys through that four dimensions, but yes. Okay. So they are presenting, um, you know, in the class. Hmm. It might it might want could good could uh, sorry it could go to the community to the wider community hmm. that children can connect well and they can see that to what level the the solution which they have come up with how practical it is how feasible it is they talk hmm. imagine you know they they talk a lot but is it really doable hmm. sometimes assess that as well the product okay so i had few more but it's okay um i wanted you to choose i think so whenever we are reflecting on authentic assessments maybe we can look into monitoring documenting these four dimensions and then we can assess our reporting yes okay so a uh, small Feedback, if you can give me one aspect of your assessment practice which you would like to stop, something which you would like to continue and something which you want to add on. Is there anything which this session might have helped you? But you were there on seven already, so I'm not sure if you have anything to stop. Is there anything to add on? Not really? Perfect, not really, ma'am. Okay. It's a nice understanding. <laughs> so maybe is there anything which you would like to add on to your teaching practice? which you have gained from this session? Uh, in language, I would like to create more uh, authentic. Although I was doing little thematic for the students, but I'll try to make more authentic through this basis. Okay. Yeah, use this as a checklist, no? Yeah. When I'm saying I am making an authentic assessment, they mm. must go back and uh, check whether yeah. everything is that done. Because, maybe. Yeah, yeah, unknowingly we may do it, but then yeah. maybe sometimes we may uh, we may forget something. Yeah. So a checklist with us, and then every time we make an assessment, go back to it and then just check whether you have included everything. So sure, ma'am. Yeah. So I would I would also suggest you that if you could go to uh, just check micro credentials. 
please do it it is such a learning experience you have the complete uh, i'll show you how does it look like very quickly okay where it is available i'll show you i'll show you right now um So I'll just show you. Um, okay, so this is how it is. Like uh, it is, you just write uh, micro credentials. It will take you to this page. So this is the one which I have been awarded with. And I want to show you, okay, all of, yes, this is the, this is the page. Okay, here what you need to do is you, because we are all IB schools working in IB schools, so instant where you have all organizations, you choose international baccalaureate here, and then it will show you that what all IB is offering. Okay, so these are the topics. Okay, these are the topics. You can choose the topic once you go on this. There is one on authentic assessment as well, which I am going to be doing very. This is free. All of them are free and then you have to apply for it. So all the information is given here that how to go about it, where to submit, what to submit, all of it is here completely. When you go and apply, I'll just show you this also. When you go and apply here, so here you need to submit. It is, there are two questions and you write down your answer here. You um, hyperlink your uh, evidences here like this. So there are three prompts, assessment, rubric, all, everything is there. You just have to submit your uh, evidences, your work. And then it will award you, like here. My dashboard, it shows me um, that I have been awarded with one and you can go ahead with more. That's how. It's a nice thing which you can explore. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and, um, I'm sure your tummies must be grumbling now. No. <laughs> so, is it okay if I take a quick uh, screenshot very quickly? Yes, yes, sir. yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you so much. Session. Thank I you. I hope something new you might have learned and will yes. have Yes, I like your Thank session. Thank you. I like your Thank session, you. ma'am. Very comfortable in your session. <laughs> <laughs> If you guys come to Hyderabad anytime, let me know. We can share your email ID if possible on your chat. Yes, I'll I'll put it up there. And I've seen you sharing stuff on LinkedIn. I will send you a connection request. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I think that's a better one there, no? Um, yeah. Um, Connect on LinkedIn. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Here you go. So my email ID is also there. In case if you want to have some guest talks for your teachers, for your children mm -hmm. like anytime we can also connect for that because mm -hmm. I do workshop for teachers also so for that also we can do especially in math mm -hmm. so that is uh, my forte so maybe we can do that and come over Hyderabad ah, <laughs> <definitely>. <laughs> uh, thank okay, you so much. bye 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 bye, bye. bye ma'am bye, bye. 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 bye.